Hello, my beloveds. Welcome to my hot mess ministries where I'm actually just telling you how my higher guidance kind of got me through the week. And in many ways, it is about getting through the week right now. Man, we're doing some really big rewriting and rescripting, and it all has to do right now with trust. Trust. Um, and this is a struggle for us for reasons I've explained in, you know, previous sermons. It's, it's, it's a struggle for us to actually trust. Oh my God, we're in a new place right here in an energy that actually is able to support us and an energy that won't turn against me. Really? And we've been in an energy that's turned against us for eons of time. So for us to be... A little raw and vulnerable and um, reticent about trusting is perfectly normal. However, the more we can really, really openly trust, maybe I'm thinking the less examples or demonstrations we will be given to show us that we are fully backed. I don't know. All I know is I'm giving, I'm being given all these opportunities to really just lean back into the trust that the energy's got my back, that I don't have to control, manipulate, force, or protect myself anymore. And so anyway, I've told you about the whole thing last week and the week before about having to just fall back into letting my garden be whatever it's going to be and the my dog attacking the one next door and just trusting that all was okay and then my cat being diagnosed with diabetes and just having to let that be and then it all works out. Well, these lessons were carried over into our time away at Maine, thankfully all on the first day. We were gone four days. And the first day was a nightmare. You know, it was fine on the way up, but we had family things to do with my husband and mother-in-law. And he's got every right to be stressed in that venue because he just has every right to be stressed in that venue. But he was really stressed and in a way that was just um, chaotic and uh, toxic and invasive and contagious. And... Um, so, you know, he gets all stressed about everything and it throws up all this stress all over everyone. And and it's a familiar pattern for me, you know, especially being away on vacation. So, you know, there's this wisdom like, okay, here's a familiar pattern going on and here's some healing going on. So just let it be. So I kind of had to let the first day just kind of suck. And uh, this is the pattern. Okay. So my husband is a stressed out asshole. And I have to withdraw from the intensity of it. Um, and it, it looks like I'm punishing him for being an asshole, which maybe is the cherry on top. But it's really me just kind of withdrawing my energy from him just as a protective ne a mechanism. Like, I don't want to be a part of this, so I'm just not even going to look at him and I'm not even going to acknowledge, acknowledge him. The thing with my husband is he gets really, really stressed out in a loud, aggressive way, and then it's over. Um, it's, you know, so he's one who, who's really good about voicing his emotions and letting him go through him and then getting over it. However, the pattern is I get infected with it and I cannot get over it as quickly. And so inside, I'm like, oh my God, I hate this. I hate him. He's ruining everything. And as I said, I was able to recognize this pattern, that this was something that was healing, but it doesn't mean I could get out of it. I couldn't get out of it, you know? I just couldn't get out of it. And as a byproduct of him being stressed, uh, I'll just give you a quick little, I don't want to go in the whole thing, but we had two cars. We had He, he inherited his mother's car, and I'm following him to the hotel, and I wasn't, I didn't know where the hotel was. So I'm following in Portland, Maine, which is a city. And he didn't get over in time to get off the exit. And here I am following him. He didn't get off in time. And there's four lanes. And this is the, my nightmare. This is like a nightmare of mine of like getting lost in the city, missing an exit, being lost in the city. Big nightmare of mine. I don't like city driving at all. Um, 
so here I was being faced with this big fear of I'm all the way on the left side and there's three lanes of traffic over there that I have to cross to, to kind of cut everyone off to get off the right exit. And I, I, this really is a big nightmare of mine. And I remember here he is over here and I, I'm over here and I'm looking at him going, what the fuck? And, uh, you know, I didn't direct this day with affirmations or prayers or anything. I didn't direct it. And so all this chaos is ensuing and I'm just going, what the fuck? But at this moment that I'm looking at him going, what the fuck? And he's looking at me going, yeah, man, I screwed up here. You know, something happened and I can't even describe what. But there was a divine intervention where I was able to get over. that We were surrounded by cars. But it's like, it's it's like the Red Sea parted. Nobody was honking. I didn't feel any anger from the, you know, and I can pick up on energy. I didn't feel any anger from any of the other drivers. Um, no judgment. It was just like this moment of peace and the Red Sea parting. And I can't even tell you how it happened. All I know is we were able to get safely over three and four lanes of traffic to get off the exit that we had already kind of missed. And so I give you this example because I am facing a lot of my biggest nightmares and everything's okay. Everything is okay. So the divine masculine you know i've been talking about the divine feminine for two years now ever since the august 2017 eclipse when the divine feminine the divine mother came to this earth full force did we receive the divine feminine energy well the divine masculine i'm getting chills right now is here and has our backs the divine masculine has the back of the divine feminine in a way that has not been seen on this earth yet. And so somehow the divine masculine intervened here and parted the sea and got me over here. So I'm, I'm having to face these nightmares, you know, like diagnosis of a terminal illness or a chronic illness. Um, and you know, these may seem like little things, but these are big things to me. My dog attacking another dog. This has been a source of my own victimization for many years now, my dog attacking others. And still having everyone be okay. So the dogs fought, but no one got hurt. My dog, my cat was diagnosed with diabetes and yet he doesn't have it, he's okay. He's okay. I had to be in a very dangerous situation on the highway, accident causing, you know, situation, and yet all was okay. My husband was a big fat jerk, and, and yet, and yet everything was okay. It was okay. So whatever biggest nightmares we might be facing right now, if we can just take a deep breath and understand that no matter how bad it looks, it's really okay, then that is the trust. This is the trust, like, oh my God, look, I'm facing these awful things. And you just the trust and all these little things that are not really little, but are helping me trust that their home situation is gonna be okay too. It's actually just gonna be okay. So we need to, I need to fall back into trust of the divine masculine. And so I want to give you a little bit more story of this first day. So even though it was all okay, and my husband got through it quickly, um, and I knew that it was a healing opportunity of like, okay, this is a pattern that we've fallen in the last 21 years we've been together, and it's coming up to be healed. And so I'm, I'm able to understand that, except I still couldn't get out of it. I went to bed that night because I heard that, you know, when we went, our plans in Maine had to do with outdoor activities, taking our boys to... Um, a mountain hike down to this gorgeous beach and then to a wildlife zoo. I mean, it depended on the weather being nice. And uh, when we were there on Tuesday on top of my, my 
Deer's husband being an asshole. He was also telling me that it's supposed to rain. You know, he said the weather is questionable for next, for tomorrow. And when he said that, my little hole just got dug deeper. You know, this, this, this child inside, but doesn't feel safe because she's around stress. And then she's really mad because she's not getting her way and getting good weather. So that little terrified child had quite a little inner temper tantrum on Monday night. And, you know, I was able to voice it to my husband. I said, I look, I know it seems like I'm punishing you, but it's I'm withdrawing because I can't handle your energy. You know, he and he had apologized to everybody and said that he was not going to be stressed out. And, you know, he, he was going to handle everything better. And he did. He did. But I still couldn't get out of this little dark hole that I had dug for myself. And so to be perfectly honest and perfectly transparent, I was up the middle of the night um, sorry, people had just come home. Um, the saying, help me, help me, help me. I'm, I'm like begging for help. I'm like, I understand what's going on here, but I can't get myself out of this. I'm, I'm up for hours in the night and I'm just saying, help me. I need help. Help me. I need help. Show me I'm not alone. I know we're doing important work right now, but I need to feel supported. Help me. You have to help me. And that was okay that is okay. We are doing tremendous work right now, clearing eons of karma and wounding. And if we are up in the middle of the night and we can't, we just need extra help, call out for it. I need help. You need to help me. This is what I said over and over for a couple hours. And I got help. I did. I got help from my guides, my angels, my support, whomever. Adama St. Germain was a big one. I have to say that because, you know, I, I woke up with a song called Adamus in my head. He came and he swooped in and he, and he helped me. And how, did, how do I know I was helped? Because the, the storm in me had passed. It had passed. You know, there was a, a calming, a settling. So I woke up the next morning to rain, <laughs> to rain. But the storm in me had passed. So it's okay to ask for help when we really can't get out of it ourselves. And we will be helped. Uh, this, the energies now have our back. They have our back. So there I am with my boys looking out at the rain. It's pouring down rain. And I'm saying, okay, well, I'm just going to trust, you know, if our plans don't work out, if there's something better or, you know, something equally as fun. So we're just going to have to trust so my boys and I just, you know, we enjoyed watching the rain for about an hour. And then my husband wakes up and looks at the weather and says, no matter what, we're going on our mountain hike. We're going to that beach and it's going to clear up. And guess what? It did. It did. So I, uh, you know, was looking at the rain and I just took a deep breath and just trusted it would work out. No praying, no praying, no affirmations. No directing. I just took a deep breath and said, whatever direction this is going to go, it'll work out. And it did. I couldn't be attached to our plans, even though I really wanted to do it. And I'm so glad that we were able to do it. The next morning we woke up to rain again, but again, the rain passed and we were able to do all our outdoor plans. So all this to say is there is a new support. There is a new energy here that wants to support us. And we have to, I have to lean back into the trust of that. And it is the divine masculine that wants to protect and revere and uphold the divine feminine expression. Um, and so when we have the divine masculine firmly in place, there can be an effortlessness, which I am still in the learning curve of this because it is a lot for me not to try and protect and to direct because that has been my MO for many, many years, lifetimes, appropriately so. But now is a new life for us. And so we're being asked to trust the flow of life. And it is a learning curve because of the trauma that we have faced in many, many lifetimes. So I invite you to create an image for yourself of the divine masculine. What does that look like for you? And for me, I, my divine masculine is a whole team. 
And I'm going to tell you what they look like and how they serve me because this delights me, it makes me laugh, and it makes me feel protected. So my Divine Masculine is a team of three powerful, gorgeous men. Uh, the first one is Thor, you know, from the Marvel movies. Oh, yes, Thor. Um, and what does he do? He uses his hammer to clear the way for me. It's probably him who cleared the traffic so I could get on over. So there's my Thor, Thor Divine Masculine, who uses his hammer to clear the way. And then there's my brother, Divine Brother Yeshua, who, in all honesty, looks like the actor who played Jesus in The Son of God. Hot! It's just hot. So my Jesus is hot, and he parts the sea for me. He makes the miracles happen. Um, he is the one who makes the miracles happen. And then my third is Aquaman. <laughs> and the actor who plays the new Aquaman in the new Aquaman. Uh, yeah, I got a thing for long hair and beards, and my divine masculine is made out of that. And he is my protector. So I have one that clears the way. I have one that is the protector. And I have one that makes the miracles. And that is my divine masculine team. And that is who I can just relax into now. This is my inner divine masculine. That's who it is. So what does yours look like? What does your divine masculine look like? And know that they can, they want to work with you and for you. It is the divine masculine that has us put the boundaries up with things that are not nurturing to us if we're giving ourselves away to us. Um, if we're giving ourselves away too much, it is the divine masculine that reels us back in, puts up the boundaries, and says this is what we're going to handle and this is what we're going to allow in our lives and this is what we're not going to allow in our lives. It's that firmness, that protection, those boundaries, that support, the support. We are able to be supported right now in a way we've never been supported before and I've had many opportunities for these steep learning, cur learning curves and so I'm, I'm just going to just do my best after all of this to just really really just trust my back is gotten now the energies may not turn against me anymore they won't turn against me anymore we're in a new energy now. We're in a new energy. So that's what my divine masculine looks like. That's the divine masculine that's working for me. Um, and it really is about just leaning back into the trust of it. The trust of it. What's going on with my gardens right now? I don't know. But I, my husband was out there weeding earlier. Mm, that's interesting. The divine masculine wants to provide for us. It wants to work for us. And we just have to allow it. So for those of us that have been spending all this time protect, pr protecting, defending, controlling, forcing, manipulating, having to know what's going to happen. That's the thing. Especially for me. We have to know what's going to happen so we feel safe. It's learning to lean into the unknown, into the spontaneousness. And my husband, to give him proper credit, was the divine masculine the rest of our trip. He rocked it, uh, forced us out of our comfort zones to do things we wouldn't have normally wanted to do. He rocked it the rest of the time. He really, really did. Um, and I'm able to honor him for the role he plays for me. Because there's this, you know, back and forth and give and take. And I honor him for the role he plays for me. I mean, we're on this journey together. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're our biggest challenges and our biggest rewards. So, you know, there's more I could say. But I think I'm not going to right now. Uh, but it, it has to do with the with the body again. We can trust the body. I, I'll, I'll give a little taste. I'll just give a little taste um, and maybe I'll save this for its own, this own, its own video. But you know, being gone for a few days. Oh, here we go. We're <laughs> we're freezing. Okay, we're just we're freezing. But the the energies. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. The energies that want to support us also want to support our bodies. 
And when it comes to controlling and fixing and manipulating, that also has to do with our food and our diets. And it might sound shallow and neurotic, but it's not. It's part of the deep, deep programming of, okay, we're going to fool these humans and think that, you know, they have to really control what they're eating in their bodies. So that way all their attention is on the outward and all their attention is on these things that don't matter. And so they won't, they won't know how limitless and magnificent they are. And magnificent they are. That's part of the programming. But, you know, I just trusted as I was fed way more than I usually eat that, you know, it's all okay. You know, I don't have to control and force and starve and deprive to maintain, you know, what's happened in this body of the past here. And, um, I, you know, no weight was gained. No fitness was lost. There's no outside thing that we have to control or fix or manipulate or deprive or struggle with anymore. You know, stepping on the scale today was like, okay, I'm going to show, I'm just going to show myself that I can trust that the divine masculine has my back in this body too. And I took a deep breath. And with that, you know, and then no, no weight was gained, even though truckloads of food were eaten um, in a way that I don't, and, and not in a binging kind of way, but as if, as if the universe is saying, you're on vacation, eat this delicious, sensual food and enjoy it. It wasn't like, oh, I'm on vacation, I gotta eat. I gotta eat. It's not, nothing like that. It was like, instead it was like a handed, enjoy this feast, you deserve it and there's nothing to be afraid of kind of way. You know, this is the energy that we can now lean into with trust. So I'm gonna give you just two of the tools I'm using right now. And the one is just the deep breath, you know, just, Taking that in, when I take a deep breath, it's an intention of just trusting that the energies have got my back. Just that one deep breath, that's it. And instead of an affirmation or a prayer, I, I simply state a desire. Like with my cat, when I, he was sick, and I didn't want to face any of these um, choices I was given. I simply said, from a place of deep self-love and honoring, I just want an effortlessly healthy Bootsy. I said it once and I just, that was it. And for my vacation, I said, I just want an enjoyable family vacation for all of us. You know, so it's like a, a deep desire that I am stating from the deep self-love and honoring of what it is I really want. And like a just step back and let it happen kind of thing. So I'm not visualizing, I'm not praying, I'm not continually affirming, we're going to have a great vacation, we're going to have a great vacation, we're going to have a great vacation. It's just this deep place of this is just what I want from a place of self-love and honoring. Just once and let it be done. So it's, it's, like a, it's like a setting of the course. This is the course I want to take. Get me there, however you can. Um... And that is having like a magical power, you know? So there is still a little bit of co-creation of like getting in touch with what I really want and what's really acceptable to me. What's acceptable? Having a sick family member, whether it's a person or a feline, it's not acceptable. Having a crappy family vacation is not acceptable. Being thrown out of my house because of the banks, not acceptable. These are just the things I'm saying and setting course and letting the divine masculine carry me there. And it's the divine masculine and the divine feminine and the holy child all thrown in. So honestly, I have no idea how this is working. All I know is I'm not supposed to know and I have to trust in the unknown and trust that the energies have my back. They have my back. Even when I'm facing my worst nightmare, just take a deep breath in let it happen, knowing that important things are happening and letting, letting myself be led to brand new energies that won't turn against me. So that was my week. I would love to hear how your week's going. And I appreciate the emails and the comments and the donations that are, are saying, oh my God, yeah, that's what's going on with me too. I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's a collective thing that we're going through. And, uh, you know, going back to something I say all the time, we've been let out of prison, but we've been institutionalized.
institutionalized. So it's hard to trust this freedom. It's hard to trust that, oh my God, we're in a new energy that actually wants to support us, that actually wants to deliver divine justice, where we won't get hurt anymore. Oh my God. See, I'm getting chills again. But we have to trust that this is the energy, okay? And it comes from a place of self-love and honoring that we accept it in. We breathe it in. We just breathe it in. Set the chorus with, I just want to. And let it, let it happen. Let it happen in whatever way it happens, knowing that it is the highest way if you just let it be. I love you, my dear brothers and sisters. We're doing amazing work right now. And this is how it's looking in my life. Thank you for tuning in today. I will pass around the offering plate. And uh, thank you in advance for any donations that support this divine work that supports our collective divinity. I love you. And we'll see what this week brings. And tell me, tell me what your divine masculine looks like. I put myself out there. I got Thor, Aquaman, and Jesus. Can you imagine a better trio? I bet you can. Who's yours? I love you.